and I'm not even recording. All righty. So, um, uh, so you can see, you can all see my screen. So, uh, let's go to Yahoo Finance. And yesterday you saw, I mean, I was talking about, you know, the Apple's, you know, um, uh, history, not just the history, but, you know, uh, I mean, not, not the history in the sense of, you know, uh, uh, like, you know, narrative. Of, you, know, but, you know, I was talking about the Apple's price trend over the last 40 years, right? Apple having been... Uh, Apple, you know, went public, having gone public in 81. That's 81. That's about there. Um, 40 years. It's been 40 years, right? Since. So, uh, suppose, you know, um, you want to, uh, let's, you know, uh, download Apple's data and let's actually calculate the return. Okay, uh, so I'm going to do um, uh, most recent five years, most recent five years, okay, uh, the recent, most recent five-year price trend is like this, and it's not just the price trend that we want to, uh, and there was split here and another split mo more recently, which was, you know, last year. Um, but this is not the data. So how do we uh, get the data? So what you can do is you can go to, um, uh, so if everyone is looking at this, you know, you gotta do the same thing. Don't just, don't just watch. You gotta open, uh, you gotta go uh, a web browser and go to Yahoo Finance, okay? Tell me how many of you are, how many of you have, uh, Yahoo Finance open in front of you. How many of you? Hmm? Abraham, do you have Yahoo Finance open in front of you? Abraham, are you there? Abul, okay, Abraham. Yeah, sure. Yeah, you can have a second. Yeah. I mean, I'm uh, trying listen. to open it. Okay, so of course you have to open the uh, um, the browser first, then go to Yahoo Finance. Okay, uh, Abul, you have Yahoo Finance opened in front of you. I mean, uh, in the past. No, uh, I don't. Yahoo, okay, uh, Yahoo Finance is almost as if you know that is a. Uh, a uh, very legitimate data source. It is a legitimate data source, but uh, prior to 1990s, you know, that was we didn't even have internet prior to 1995. Okay, and in 1995, uh, two things happened. You know, Windows 95 came out, and Windows 95 was the first graphic user interface uh, what we have now you think it is you know uh, like a default no it wasn't a default prior to 1995 it was a it was dos the operating system was dos so there was nothing graphic now we can you know uh, surf the net and you know uh, open prior to 1995 um uh, what you could do with the computer was, you know, uh, basically uh, word processing <laughs> and spreadsheet. Uh, and then uh, the earlier form of spreadsheet was called FoxPro. I mean, there was, that was the, and there was also something called um, FoxPro and something, some, I forgot, uh, something called one, two, three, you know, something one, two, three. I don't, I don't remember, you know, uh, Excel came only later, uh, as a Microsoft Microsoft uh, Office package, but you know, prior to that, uh, there was something called Word Pro, and and only uh, and uh, the operating system was DOS, so it was you know a black screen and you know white font, you know, 
you have to actually type in the uh, the command and then it like you know uh, make directory or you know um, open file or you know um, you don't there's no such command as open file but it was like you know uh, you search the directory you know so list you know when you um, in the dos command you know you change directory to something cd something and directory name and then all the files in that directory are listed and you just click on that and it opens and then there was no internet there was email but the email was on intranet okay the email was on intranet um and the intranet was so uh, the email was mainly within you know uh like you know uh within the intranet intranet was basically uh, like college you know uh, a campus uh, the universities had mainframe computers so the mainframe computers uh were you know um within the campus everything was online so that's called intranet but you know outside the campus it was connected to nothing uh so the email i was able to send the email to uh you know um uh, uh another faculty member or to a student or to a faculty or you know between students that's that's it because you know everyone everybody was in the same domain right but in 95 you know as i said you know windows 95 came out okay and windows 95 had this um you know windows 95 is a uh, graphic user interface windows uh, the thing that you know as as it is now so no, no more we didn't use you know uh, we didn't need DOS anymore so um, and then with the um, graphic user interface Windows 95 uh, brought the age of you know uh, uh, World Wide Web www dot right www dot and uh, uh, and the internet was called, you know, information superhighway in those days, in late uh, 1990s, you know, uh, mid, late, uh, mid 1990s, you know, it was called information superhighway. And that was the term used by Al Gore, okay? Al Gore ran for president, you know, F, uh, Bill Clinton served two terms, you know, uh, between 1993 and like, you know, uh, uh, leading to 2000, right? So um, uh, so there was an election, you know, um, uh, at the end of 1999 and from 2000, you know, um, new administration came in and the candidates were, you know, uh, Al Gore, who was vice president under Bill Clinton and George W. Bush. And was a... Uh, 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 neck and neck uh, competition, and you know, uh, uh, I remember that Al Gore won the popular vote, but you know, uh, because of the electoral college vote, and there was this, you know, uh, uh, there was this, you know, um, uh, controversy controversy about the. Uh, uh, what they call Chad issue, you know, like, you know, in Flo especially in Florida, you know, uh, there were pre-punched, punched holes in the uh, ballot and uh, uh, it wasn't clear where, you know, that, that punched uh, hole was put. And so mm -hmm. somehow, yeah, 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 hanging Chad, yeah, hanging Chad, yes. Yes, Abul, uh, I don't think you are old enough to uh, remember that. <laughs> I mean, if you are still, if you are alive at the time, probably you were just, you know, uh, an infant. I don't know how old you are, but you know, uh, assuming that you are in your twenties, then you were probably not, you know, uh, old enough to remember that. To remember that, at least you must have been an adult at the time. Yeah, um, but 
but at least you could have read about it. Yeah, you could have read about it. Uh, yeah, uh, it was, um, you had to actually see the ballot at the time. You, maybe you can do a Google search, you know, whether that, you know, a ballot, what it looked like. Because I, I didn't live in Florida. I didn't know. Uh, I don't know what, it, I saw it on the news, but I didn't really look into it. But because of that controversy, um, uh, Al Gore was a, a decent gentleman. He conceded. I mean, you know, to he didn't want that issue to be a uh, political, um, political, you know, uh, 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 turmoil. So uh, he conceded. He's a gentleman, not like you know uh, 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 Trump. There's no decency. There's no decent bone to be found in that, uh, uh, in that, you know, uh, uh, Grinch. I mean, <laughs> a little, it's not even a, uh, I, I don't think he's a, uh, his soul is Grinch, you know, his, <laughs> he, he takes on human form, but uh, inside, I, I believe it's, it's Grinch in, inside him. But anyway, um, so Elgo called it in a information superhighway, but in the during the election campaign, uh, <laughs> I still remember this. George W. Bush uh, said, uh, "Elgo says internet su uh, information superhighway is his achievement, but internet starts with W." You understand what that means? So this was an, uh, so how, what, why does internet start with W? And um, what he meant was WWW, right? What he meant was WWW. But this was, I mean, someone who understood, there were people who didn't understand it, people who understand it, and there were people who didn't understand it. And in that year, right, uh, before the election, I think it was before the election, or, uh, yeah, I was, uh, or after the election, or, uh, I was I was on a flight to uh, uh, a conference, and in the uh, uh, that was that was shortly after uh, George W. said that in his campaign. It was all you know televised. You know, someone anybody who saw the news, and um, there were these two people. I, I think they were, you know, like uh, colleagues or office mates. You know, they were probably traveling uh, uh, on business, and uh, uh, a young woman and a young guy, a uh, young man, and they, and the young woman was saying that, uh, oh well, George W. said, you know, <laughs> internet uh, starts with W, and the the young guy didn't get it. What? Is it why? Is it Winternet? <laughs> no, uh, he didn't get. It. He didn't get the joke. But you know, um, so uh, with Windows ninety five, then uh, the World Wide Web uh, came around. I I don't think it was exactly because of the Windows ninety five, but the time was you know uh, uh, ripe, uh, and all the uh, mainframe computers around the world uh, were, you know, connected online through WW, you know, a World Wide Web. So, hence the internet. And so, from 1995, right, um, um, two things, uh, I mean, three things, three things were big, you know, buzzwords on the uh, internet. Uh, which were Yahoo and Amazon and eBay. <laughs> they were there in 95. They were there. First, you know, internet uh, marketers, you know, Amazon and, you know, eBay. And then uh, Yahoo was the, uh, uh, the only search engine at the time. Yahoo was the only search engine at the time. Google came around only in like in the 2000s, but you know, uh, before, uh, until then it was Yahoo. And Yahoo was wonderful 
not uh, because it was a search engine, but you know, Yahoo had Yahoo Finance. And still, yeah, you know, um, uh, like, you know, 25 years, right? 25, 26 years uh, on, uh, Yahoo Finance is the uh, pretty much the uh, best. Uh, I wouldn't say uh, most, you know, um, uh, extensive, but it is most effective and efficient, you know, because prior to uh, uh, Yahoo Finance, if you are doing a research in finance, how do you get the data? I mean, where is, how do you find the data? Uh, you had to uh, actually, you know, um, and there was no internet uh, in the days before internet. Um, you had to buy the data. You had to purchase the data. And the data was a proprietary item. And um, so they had a, uh, 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 service called, you know, uh, CompuStat. And <laughs> you can order data from CompuStat. And then it was very expensive, you know, thousand dollars, you know, for data. Come on, you know, for a uh, if you were a graduate student in those days, you know, uh, really getting the data. I mean, uh, the the universities had all the universities basically had Bloomberg machine, but to use the Bloomberg machine uh, in those days, you cannot download the data into a. a uh, USB or in a comp CD, <laughs> in the, that was already you know uh, that's already much later. But you know even until mid 1990s, uh, if you wanted to get the financial market data, then you had to uh, use Bloomberg machine, and there was only one Bloomberg machine per you know uh, uh, university, and you had to uh, in the library. You had to sign up. You have to sign. You had to sign up to get the data, and uh, and to search. It was. It wasn't. Once again, it wasn't Windows. You know, it was basically you no know, um, uh, DOS system. So I don't know if you ever saw the movie from 1990s. You know, uh, and uh, there was this movie. I think it was called War Game or something. And this, you know, um, uh, child prodigy. Uh, a very smart kid. He was, you know, playing video game, but somehow he got uh, he got connected with the uh, uh, Department of Defense system, and then he was playing game on it. And the uh, DoD computer uh, thought it was, you know, actual aggression from the Soviet Union. <laughs> it was still a Cold War era. So uh, even in those days, you know, uh, they were able to uh, hack into <laughs> smart kids were able to hack into the uh, DoD <laughs> computer. <laughs> but anyway, the uh, so everything was DOS, you know, in those days. So um, the you had to sign up to use the uh, you know uh, Bloomberg machine. So uh, and then uh, it was only like thirty minutes. You were given like thirty minutes. Because there, there's a long line, long queue. I couldn't even dare to, uh, you know. Um, and if you have a some connection, if you have some connection, you could get a data f uh, with people in the bank, right? Banking industry, you could probably, you know, uh, uh, get some data from them, or you know, buy data from them. But otherwise, you know, you have to uh, do that, you know, uh, <clears throat> in the library. And in those days, you had. There was, you know, dot matrix print printer, and the data is just printed out. You have to print it out on a paper, you know. There's you no know, um, dot matrix. You don't even know what dot matrix printer is like, you know. Like, you know, um, there's a lot of noise, and uh, it's uh, it's basically printer uh, printer moves the paper by, you know. Uh, uh, what's that called? Cog and pinion, cog, you know, as the, uh, the the cog wheel turns, you know, and that makes noise, tick, 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 noise, right? So, but, you know, when it is printed out, how do you use it? You have to manually type that data into uh, a spreadsheet. This is crazy. You can't do it like that. 
right? Otherwise, you have to buy the data, uh, and it you know from CompuStat or from other you know uh, data merchant, and it's very expensive. And if you are a graduate student, you know, uh, doing research, you know, <laughs> I mean, just for your paper, you can you uh, I mean you know. Um, uh, one thousand? Can you spend a thousand dollars for data? That was 1990s, you know. And you think, you know, how life is, you know, easier now. And 1990s was, you know, uh, not that long ago. It's not like Jurassic Park. That was, you know, still 1990s was still a very uh, advanced uh, era, because in 1991, when there was Gulf War, they had, you know, a smart bomb. What is smart bomb? It's a missile that, you know, with the GPS, it finds exactly, you know, uh, its target. A company named Raytheon makes it. Still, the, the Raytheon is still around. You can look up uh, Raytheon in uh, Yahoo Finance. And uh, on, on TV screen, you see, I mean, a missile finding its target by GPS system and you know, hitting the target, it's, you know, uh, through camera uh, mounted on the uh, warhead of the missile, it's televised on CNN to the audience in their living room. So you can't say that was a, uh, like a, a primitive time. <laughs> we weren't living in Jurassic Park in the, uh, uh, the 90s was a very advanced, you know, uh, time era. Um, but still, you know, uh, uh, getting data was a uh, uh, a mountain. You know, it's a mountain you have to uh, uh, conquer. But then, in, with 90, in '95, with the uh, uh, advent of uh, internet and the, uh, uh, as I said, you know, three things were like buzzwords in those days: Amazon. Yahoo, Amazon, <laughs> eBay. So on TV, or oh, AOL, also AOL, America Online. So in those days, you know, if you turn on the TV, that's the buzzword. You you would hear the uh, commercials of you know, Yahoo, and you know, that was you know, <laughs> the commercial Yahoo and uh, uh, Amazon. Amazon had a, a very strong ring to it because. What does Amazon in Brazil have to do with, you know, this online marketer, right? Online uh, shopping mall, it's called online shopping mall. And eBay, and what does eBay have to do with, you know, uh, online auction? But anyway, um, but Amazon was very strong because, you know, it also had association with, you know, uh, Amazonian, you know, Amazon S, Amazon S, you know, the uh, female warriors. Um, but anyway, so um, with the uh, coming, with the uh, coming of the um, internet, then, you know, Yahoo was there and Yahoo Finance was a wonderful thing because although it wasn't uh, very sophisticated at the time, at least you don't have to pay, right? You don't have to pay for the data and then you don't, um, uh, you don't have to uh, sign up for 30 minutes in the library uh, for the Bloomberg machine. And actually, it was not very easy to use the you know Bloomberg machine. So um, everything is quite intuitive now. But you know, in those days, it wasn't very intuitive because uh, these days everything is graphic. In those days, there was no graphic. Everything was, you had to type in the command. And that was, you know, uh, not very intuitive. So, um, and in the uh, in early days, Yahoo Finance was not considered a legit source of data. But data is data. I mean, how can it not be legit? Because it's about price. I mean, you, you look up, you know, price of, you know, uh, let's say, you know, GM, General Motors. You look up price of, you know, uh, 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 whatever, you know, uh, Raytheon, you look up price, price data, at least not price, that's, you know, uh, uh, market price data, there's no 
there's no reason it cannot be re legit. It's just, you know, uh, reported as of the uh, latest transaction. So by 2000s, you know, uh, Yao Finance is uh, braced as a, a decent data source, you know, and it's, you know, legit, you know, no matter what you say. So let's say you, if you are, if you have Yao Finance in front of you, let's go to uh, India. If you want any other data, not, if you want something else, uh, tell me but you know uh let's just take a look at you know because i already have have opened uh you type in you can just type in apple now you can type in like what's going on my keyboard is dead okay yeah my keyboard went to sleep you can type in name uh and then you can get the uh, symbols uh it's called ticker symbol uh, but in the old days, you had to type in just the ticker symbol, right? Not the company name, okay? Uh, so you type in Apple, you will get Apple. Now, what you wanna, uh, what I want you to do is uh, go to historical data. Click on historical data. Historical data is uh, that's not the. Uh, uh, Academic, uh, that's not the uh, <laughs> academic name. The academic name is uh, time series, time series data, time series. That means, you know, time. Or it's also called longitudinal data, longitudinal. Uh, so most people uh, who have at least some graduate, most people who have graduated education, uh, not necessarily in, uh, uh, economics and finance, uh, but even you know, uh, uh, even in social sciences, you know, they when they do the research, you know, like historical research, then they they will need data, and they what they need is longitudinal data. They all, there are two types of data, longitudinal data and latitudinal data. Latitudinal data, longitudinal data is obvious. It's his, you know historical data, right? Uh, time series. Uh, latitudinal data is cr also called cross-sectional data, cross-sectional. So latitudinal data is not time series. It's just about um, in, in a single point in time. So it's static. It's not dynamic data. It's static. It's also called synchronic, not dichronic, diachronic, not diachronic, synchronic. So think about it. If I want to find average height of everyone in this class, what would I do? First, I will have to collect the uh, height measurement, right? Uh, height data from everyone. So this height data is collected at the same point in time, right? So it's not time series, right? It's just, you know, uh, 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 it's called, you know, latitudinal data or cross-sectional data because, you know, uh, there are females and males and everyone, you know, are people from different ethnic groups. So it's cross-sectional, right? That makes sense. Um, but, you know, if I want to, uh, uh, if I have observed, you know, uh, growth of someone, height, you know, uh, the physical growth of someone, you know, uh, uh, let's say I'm a pediatrician. And if I know you from, you know, uh, if I know one of you from your childhood, you know, and as your pediatric, pediatrician, you know, if I have measured your height and weight, I must have the record of, of that over the last 20 years or something. And that's longitudinal data, right? Okay. Now, so, um, so I have the data for the last five years because it's dating from, oh, no, it's not last five years. I want to collected for the last five years. So I will select the time period from like, you know, uh, uh, starting. Uh, let's start from uh, July, July 1st of not 2000, no, no, July, 
July 1st of not 2020, but uh, five years ago, 2016, it has to be. Okay. July 2016, end date today, right? Dawn, and then. And then uh, frequency, uh, and let's see, you know, starting from it's not it's not uh, it's daily data, but you know, uh, uh, so make sure your data range is correct. And then uh, frequency, uh, we need monthly data because daily data uh, is totally you know uh, daily data has too much you know. Um, Volatility. I mean, you know, meaningless small fluctuations. Meaningless small fluctuations. So make sure you have June. Oh, why? Uh, yeah, June 30. June 30 is you know uh, the same thing as July 1st. End of June 30 is the same thing as you know beginning of July 1st. First, and um, uh, that will make it five years, and then monthly, right? And then hit apply. And you already see, oh, well, dividend was paid, August dividend, dividend. Uh, every three months, every quarter, quarterly, dividend was paid. And then there was stock split. It shows, you know. OK. Uh, so now we need to download it. Because the way it is now, it's you know we cannot use it. We cannot, you know. Uh, we cannot do anything with the data uh, other than just viewing. Okay, so everyone is okay up to this point. Everyone got the monthly data, monthly price for the last five year time frame. Time frame. Yes, all right. Oh, I hear my voice back. Okay, all right, then click download. Okay, click download. Hit download, and then you will see. Uh, depending on your browser, you will, it may show you what was downloaded. But you know, if if you if your browser shows, you know, uh, that then uh, don't just open it. Uh, click the folder. And let's see what you know. And then in the fold, then you open it from the folder. Okay, then it looks like this. And if you. Um, now, I, the way, this is the default font. This is the default font. But, you know, I don't like this because the font size is too small and the font is very dull. Um, this is something, uh, you know, if you are working with data, if you are in the future, I mean, if you, if your job, if you're, you know, in your occupation, if it is an occupation that has to deal with, you know, data, then you know um, uh, being data friendly. I mean, uh, the data, the, the data being human friendly <laughs> is important. In other words, you know, it shouldn't be something that will exhaust your eyes because it, it's going to exhaust your eyes, and data will look not nothing but meaningless numbers, right? Uh, to me, at least, it's like, I don't like this because it's totally not friendly to my eyes. It's not good for my vision. The font size is totally you know, uh, not good for my vision. It's gonna, uh, I'm gonna lose my sight you know, if I work with you know, this type of, if my occupation is something that will have to deal with this type of data for you know, like uh, all my life, then you know, in 20 years, you, know, uh, uh, you will have, you know, uh, Severely, severely, you know, uh, uh, weakened vision or what would you, uh, hampered vision or what's the word, you know, um, deteriorated, a severely deteriorated vision. So I don't like this. So what, what I want to do is I'm going to change the font. So you click here. I call that northwest corner, this corner. Once you click here, it's going to highlight the entire 
uh, spreadsheet. And then I can change the uh, font. First, I'm going to increase the font size to 14 and change the font to Times New Roman or Georgia. Times New Roman or Georgia. I'm going to use Georgia Pro. Okay. Looks much better. Right? And here, um, uh, the volume, this column, previously it was previously it was like this. Right? What is this? This is, you know, um, uh, the way they uh, compact the number, you know, like 2.74e plus 09. What does that mean? You add nine zeros there, nine zeros. And this hashtag simply means, you know, column with column is not wide enough to show the number there. But, you know, once you change the font, everything will be taken care of. Okay. And here's the thing. Um, this is the original data set, but the data that I need is only, you know, uh, uh, data that I need is only one, uh, data set that I need is only one. What is that? Adjusted close, okay? So I'm going to do this. I'm going to highlight. I'm going to, you know, you just highlight all this column has. Then it gets highlighted, and I will copy. And I will add a, uh, I will, you know, add a new sheet and paste it there. And then I will, I will reserve, I will preserve the original data set, and then I will uh, paste it here. For now, I don't need volume. I don't need volume, so I'm going to delete that. I don't need open, high, low. Why? Did I tell you before? Um, there are four price points during a day's tr transaction, right? First of all, there is open opening price and closing price at the closing of the market, right? And then there is high during the day, low, the highest price during the day, and the lowest price during the day. And I told you, everything else, nothing else matters, right? Only The only thing that matters is the close price. Why? Do you remember? Why only the close, close price? Why only that does close price? Uh, why only the cross? Uh, why only does the closing price matter? Hmm? I believe someone opened the microphone. That's why my voice was, you know, echoed back. Does anyone know? The price changes throughout the day, so you can't go by the yeah. price since it'll fluctuate, and the closing price will be determined until, I guess, the next day. Oh yeah, that's true. Uh, that's true. Uh, but you know, in other words, the the closing price is the uh, conclusion conclusion of that day's transaction, isn't it right? Closing price is the conclusion of the day's transaction, day's trading. So nothing else matters, right? Everything else is uh, everything else is you know. Uh, and, 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 and so who was who was that? Zero point two five. Zero point two five. I think I don't know. I think I don't know. You must have a must very have good a very audio. Good audio. Because usually, you know, when I speak, you know, uh, um, the external sound source, external sound source is usually not picked up by your microphone. But, you know, uh, uh, because my 
when I speak, my voice will come out of your speaker. So it's external because the sound is, you know, external to your computer, right? It's not, and uh, usually, you know, uh, when I play something, uh, some video, when I play some video uh, on the Blackboard system, right, or, or on Zoom, the sound that is being played from that video is not picked up by the microphone, uh, or it is, it is picked up by the microphone, but you know, uh, uh, the students will uh, normally say, you know, I can't hear it, I can barely hear it, or uh, I hear nothing. So that means, you know, uh, the external sound source is not well picked up by the microphone, <laughs> by, by my microphone. But, you know, uh, your microphones are picking up my voice, my sound, very well because it's being echoed back to me and I, I hear it very clearly, even uh, louder than my own voice. So anyway, uh, Abul, you, you got, uh, yeah, uh, a 0 0.25 for that. So open high-low, I'm going to delete it, okay? But I have preserved it. I have saved it here. So, you know, if I need it later, I can use it. And then I'm torn with, uh, I'm kind of, you know, uh, uh, in a dilemma now. Okay, there's close price and adjusted close price. Why? What is the, uh, what's the difference? How are they different? Mm -hmm. Now, uh, but before 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 talking about that, let's let me. Uh, you can tell that this data is in uh, uh, ascending order, meaning you know uh, from the uh, oldest date to the latest date. Uh, normally, I, I I would I want it uh, in a descending order. So how do you do that? Well, you can you know you can just click. You see this. This is descending order, right? If it is, you know, uh, uh, text, then it's in reverse alphabetical order. But if it is numerical data uh, from the uh, uh, largest to the smallest, if it is, you know, time uh, from the uh, latest to the oldest, If you don't see it there, you can find it also uh, if you click on home and then you can, you know, see sort and filter, you can sort, right? Newest to the oldest. And then you might wonder, uh, if I do that, isn't it going to be only the, uh, the date? No. The, these data are, you know, uh, linked. I mean, uh, Excel knows the price price data uh, is a link to the uh, date. So if you uh, sort it uh, sort it by the date, then everything will also follow. So if I sort it, uh, it's going to be like this. Okay. Are you guys all here? Do you all? Do you all? Have it so in descending order, right? Yes. Everyone? Yes. Okay, good. All right. Now, now let's uh, talk about you know the difference between um, close and adjusted close. Now, if we go back to the data source, right? If we go back to the data source. you will see uh, it's got two asterisks, right? Adjusted close as two asterisks, close as one asterisk. So there are some footnotes somewhere. Where's the footnote? Here's the footnote. Close price adjusted for splits. Of course, I've been telling you, the price has to be adjusted for split. There has been multiple splits over the life of Apple. And if you don't adjust for it, adjust for the splits, then it looks like, you know, it will look like, you know, Apple crashed in uh, uh, 2000, 
2014 and crashed again in 2020. Um, and here, adjusted close price is adjusted for both dividends and splits. Okay, so look, if they don't pay any dividends, uh, we don't have any problem. But because they pay dividends, these dividends will have to be incorporated into our data. I mean, why? Because uh, you see the dividend data here, but when we download it, after we download it, there's no dividend. There's no dividend data. You don't see any dividend. So what does that mean? That means we have to use adjusted close price. You understand? And of course, the number, um, uh, these are all dollar values. Think about it. These are all dollars, right? These are all dollar values. So I'm going to highlight all of them and give it uh, dollars because, and think about it. If they are dollars, what is the meaning of so many decimal places? So these so many decimal places are just, you know, a uh, uh, result of, you know, mathematical calculation. Uh, think about it. We don't use anything below a cent. We don't use any, there's no denomination below a cent. I mean, it's $149.96. I mean, with the uh, rounding, it would be uh, 97 cents. Whatever is below the uh, second decimal place is uh, immaterial. So we don't need to use anything below uh, second decimal place. <clears throat> it can be rounded. What I'm saying is it can be rounded off at the second decimal place. You understand? But, you know, uh, we can do it simply by using, giving it dollar symbol because if it is currency, right, we, we use only two decimal places, right? So there we have it. And we don't need this. So we're going to, because we're going to use adjusted close price because it has already, you know, uh, uh, adjusted, it's adjusted for also dividend. So I'm going to delete that column. And now we have adjusted close. So then, since this is price, we'll name it, we'll call it PT, okay? And what does that mean? It's obvious, this price at time T, isn't it right? It's price at time T. And it's monthly data, monthly data. I'm going to uh, center a line and give it like underline, so... Uh, monthly data and looking at the calendar dates it looks like hmm, then we uh, if it is closing price closing isn't that the end of the month price isn't that the end of the month shouldn't it be the end of the month price Yes, it's the end of the month price. But why is it the first date, first day of the month? So it's the beginning price of the month? No, actually, this is just the way the data, uh, the, the calendar date is, um, this is how the calendar date shows uh, for the data. In other words, uh, it should be the last day, but you know, the, uh, the month is represented, each month is represented by the first date. Of the month, so uh, uh, rest assured, this is the uh, end of the day, uh, end of the closing price of the end of the month, and of course August hasn't ended. August hasn't ended, so uh, for every other month we have the uh, closing of the month, closing price of the month, but since August hasn't ended, uh, uh, this is just the latest, latest, you know. Uh, closing uh, price, not the uh, end of the month, but you know, that's fine. We, um, and since it, this is five year, five year data, we must have 60 data points, 60 data. Do we have 60 data points? We must have 61 because I started from, oh, we have 62 actually. Yeah, why? Um, we started from, uh, to give us, 
to give ourselves, you know, uh, uh, 60 data points. We, uh, uh, what I'm talking about is, you know, uh, price is not the ultimate reason for downloading the data. Huh? Price is not the reason. Uh, price is only uh, price is only the means to achieve the goal. And what is the goal? Goal is the return. Think about it. Return is, you know, uh, uh, didn't I say uh, we, we began this course with return on investment. Isn't that right? And I've been telling you, return is what we are after. Price doesn't really matter. Because even if the price is $1,000, price is 2000 something, right? And you might think if the price is 2000 something, that must be a very hot stock. Amazon is somewhere around 2000 something, I believe. But, you know, if the return is, uh, uh, last month it was 2250 uh, And this month it is 2200 70. Well, the, there was a capital gain of twenty dollars, but in terms of return, what is it? It's not even one. It's not even one percent. Isn't that right? The return is not even one percent, right? Rather than that, if the price is, you know, price. So that's what I'm saying. Price doesn't matter. What matters is the return. Even if the price is fifty dollars, right? Which is compared to a uh, like two thousand dollar stock. $50 stock looks like a, uh, uh, this must be not, you know, uh, not a very hot company. No, it's not. Why do you think, you know, Apple split? Companies that split, right, the stocks that split, the reason for that is to make it more marketable, right? If the price is too high, it becomes less marketable. Because if I have only $2,000, I cannot buy even one share of Amazon. Or Berkshire Hathaway. A Berkshire Hathaway is 200 something. It's not a, um, uh, let's try. Uh, I think Amazon. EMZN is Amazon, right? Yeah, Amazon is even 3,200. Right? So just because it is, you know, uh, and uh, what about Berkshire Hathaway? I, I know it is about 200 something. Berkshire Hathaway. Uh, there is class A and class B. Uh, for, uh, class B. Yeah, 286. Uh, class A wouldn't be that much different. Uh, Google has class A and class B, I believe. Google also has. Uh, but uh, in, in case of Google, there's a big difference between Class A and Class B. Uh, Berkshire Hathaway, um, Class A isn't that much different. And what's the difference? You might, uh, there is, you know, something about uh, voting right and ownership. Look, uh, oh, yeah, there's that much difference. Uh, so Ber uh, Class A, <laughs> 433. Look, who can afford to buy something like that? Even if I have... $500,000, I can buy only one share, right? That means this is not very marketable. There, Berkshire, Hath Berkshire Hathaway Class A is not for uh, average market participants. This is for the, uh, the insiders. This is for the uh, uh, majority shareholders. This is for the majority shareholders, okay? And it's not traded... It's not traded that often, right? Uh, so I have I have some shares of Berkshire Hathaway. This Class B, <laughs> um, and you can never you 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 can hardly go wrong by betting on uh, Warren Buffett. <laughs> uh, I don't have that many shares. I have probably uh, five, ten. As part as part of you know diversification, just as part of diversification. Ah, so that data is gone. I'm gonna have to uh, go to chart again. I mean historical data. 
That's fine. I already got it. Uh, oh no, that was that Amazon. I'm sorry. Even Amazon. Uh, see, this is Amazon. Oh. Yeah, there's Apple data there. So back to uh, our spreadsheet. So uh, what I'm talking about is if if the price is not adjusted for split and uh, dividends, then we will have to that make that adjustment manually every three months. That's going to be a hell. And you remember the uh, formula? What is So what we want to know is now we want to, uh, find the uh, return. So that's what I was talking about. You know, what's important is the return, not the price, because even if the price is fifty dollars, right? If the price grew uh, by ten dollars last month, it was fifty. This month, it is you know sixty. It's just ten dollar increase, ten dollar capital gains compared to the. Uh, uh, Amazon example, I said, you know, uh, in that case, there was $20 capital gains. But then in terms of return, it was only one, not even 1%. But think about it, from $50 to, you know, $60, the, um, look, the return is what? Uh -huh. The $10 is 20%. Return is 20%, right? If I have, you know, uh, $10,000, $50 stock, I can buy. Like uh, if I have 10,000, uh, I can buy like uh, 200 of them. That's 10,000, uh, 50, right? So 1,000 of, yeah, 200 of them. But if it is, you know, something like Amazon, even if I have $10,000, I can, I can buy only four, right? And return is only less than not even 1%. So why, you know, uh, so price, price is not what we are after. Of course, price carries a lot of information. First of all, price, uh, the fact that for even 1% return, that kind of high price is uh, supported, means that it's, uh, there's a huge demand, right? There's a huge demand for that stock. But still, you know, in terms of return, I mean, it's irrational. Why? Because of just 1% 1, 1 return, if that price is still supported, then, you know, uh, either the, uh, uh, the buyers, the stockholders are irrational, or they are betting on something. Currently, the return is very low, but, you know, uh, the company has a, a huge growth potential or something. Otherwise, that cannot be explained. And it was exactly the case of Tesla. Because in two th Tesla uh, went public in 2010, if I remember correctly, 2010. That was also the time around uh, 2008, I think Google went public, I remember, 2008. That wasn't that, it wasn't that long ago. And Facebook went public in 2012. Uh, Tesla went public in like 2010, and in those days, you know, uh, Tesla wasn't make there was no Tesla wasn't making any money. It didn't have any profit. Why? Because it wasn't making any cars at the time, right? There was no cars sold, no cars produced. First of all, no cars built, right? So if there were no cars built, then there is no revenue. There's no sale, there's no revenue. So not to mention any profit, right? So that means, but they had, you know, uh, think about it. They had, they may not, they, they, they may not had any, they may not have had any variable cost. They had fixed cost because as long as they have, you know, uh, facilities and plants, uh, and uh, people, right? They had to incur fixed cost. So, in other words, operating expenses. That means Tesla had no profit, 
but they had loss. They they were in loss. You know, every quarter, every quarter they had loss. Okay, but in such a company, the price was very high. Price was like you know, um, even in those days, it's like hundred dollars for a company that was consistently making loss. And why was that price supported? Because the investors were still uh, betting on its potential. And then from 2012, it started to uh, uh, churn out their you know, products. You know, the cars came out. So then, you know, uh, still, even after that, uh, there was too much. That, that's a lot of bubble, actually, you know, when, um, because although uh the investors bet on the uh, growth potential of tesla but the growth potential is it's a nice word isn't that right growth potential is a nice nice word but it's an empty word also isn't that right growth potential means something when there they there is actually something when the growth happens then growth potential is not an empty word but growth potential is nothing but a hollow bubble if there is actually no growth. So un you never know. Until then, growth potential is nothing but a big question mark. It's just a big question mark. But in those days, mostly, you know, uh, in nine, uh, 2010, 2011, 12, uh, Tesla... Uh, shareholders were mainly institutional investors. Institutional, you understand? In other words, you know, uh, venture capital or you know, big, you know, uh, asset uh, money movers or you know, big financiers, you know, uh, big asset management firms. So they had the uh, analysts, you know, in these, you know, uh, who were uh, churning out, you know, a very positive report about you know Tesla. Uh, so they were, you know. But again, still, but that's huge bubble. I mean, for a company, I mean, any rational person would not, <clears throat> Warren Buffett would not put in, uh, put the money into uh, just, you know, uh, growth potential, which is not bad to buy any fundamentals. And what's the fundamental? Fundamental is basically the financial statements, right? And since Tesla was uh, making laws, you know, uh, continuously, uh, quarter after quarter, you know, until like 2012. I mean, even after 2012, think about it, all the losses that, ha that they have incurred until then, it cannot be just because they are churning out their first unit, right? Or first, you know, 100 cars, you know, it doesn't get, it's not recovered, right? All those losses piled up until then, it's not lost. It. And even uh, Tesla was still, even after, uh, producing cars, uh, they were still in loss even until like 2016, 18. I think they only started to uh, turn profit only from like 2018, a very meager profit. But still, you know, um, uh, so anyway, um, so return is what's important, right? Uh, not the... Uh, <clears throat> Uh, I don't know if in Warren Buffett's portfolio, if Tesla is, you know, uh, part of it. But um, uh, so return is very important. And how do you how do you calculate return? Does anyone remember how to calculate return? Mm -hmm. No one. This is just a disaster. You know, this is very big something you should it should be part of your uh it should be running in your bloodstream it should be almost like your second nature when i ask you know how do you calculate return it should just pop out like you know uh just you know immediately and automatically and nobody says anything so it's, a, you know, it's huh? a, the initial price point so the well the sorry the price the price that it is now minus the price that it was when you first yeah. bought it plus the dividend divided by the original uh -huh. price. Yeah, yes. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. I'm sorry, someone else is saying? Someone else is saying? Yeah, subtract. Yeah, 
the same. She say you're ready. Safiya say you're ready. Yeah. Okay, the same. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, so it was. Uh, and who, who, who else? Who is this? Ophelia. Not Safiya, mm -hmm. but who is this? I think Ophelia. you also knew the answer, huh? Ophelia. Ophelia. Okay. Ophelia. Um, I will also give you zero point two five. Yeah, I don't have to go back to then old, you know, file. Yes, formula for return is, um, where is, you know, uh, and this is what I don't like, because, ah, uh, okay, too small, so I'm going to, Okay. Let's do it this way. So. Return at time t is equal to Uh, no, no, no. Why is it like this? the equation, not the uh, and then oh, again, uh, <laughs> because of all these, you know. Uh, Using equation editor is fun, but it is very annoying because you have to uh, um, set it up, you know, enter the format first, you know, that's um, Oh. Okay, so it's you know basically a P T price at time T minus you know price at time T minus one. And then you remember the holding period return <laughs> and that holding period return. Uh, but, you know, in our example, holding period is just one month. So it is, you know, uh, really uh, cash flow at, uh, uh, cash flow during this period. So I will just call it T. And then minus one. Okay, so this is the formula. But you know, if you think about it, uh, we know uh, actually um, we can do PT minus PT minus. But you know, uh, cash flow in in this case is dividend, right? Because it's stock, cash flow is dividend. But then. We know that this is one month monthly data, so dividend doesn't happen every month. Dividend is paid quarterly. So if it is just close price, we will have to make this adjustment, you know, every uh, three months. But uh, and uh, like you know, uh, July, you know, uh, other two months we don't even have dividend. So the thing is, this is totally unnecessary because um, we don't need this because 
the price is already adjusted for dividend, right? It's adjusted for stock splits and dividends. So I'm going to just delete that. Okay. All right. So that's then now, uh, uh, because it's zero, right? Uh, dividend is zero. Uh, I mean, it's already uh, in, incorporated. It's reflected in this. So now let's find the uh, return. So this is monthly return, right? Oh, oh, where am I going? I have to scroll that way. And I want to... Oh. Come on, Kuhn, first. Okay. So how do you find uh, apply? We apply it like this. So this is... Actually, I'm not going to, uh, okay. Uh, so here, um, what is PT? What is PT? We are using July. Uh, we are, you know, uh, assuming that we are at the end of August. I mean, we are not at the end of the August, but this is the uh, latest August price. So uh, what? What is, the, uh, P, what is the PT in August? What's the PT? You don't know? This is the PT. What does it say? This is the PT. PT One, of August. Sorry. It's 149.97. Yes, that's right. But you don't have to read out the data to me. B2. I've been telling you, number is not, not important. B2. PT is B2. That's in B2, right? And surprisingly, so many people make that connection. I mean, this is PT, it says PT, and this is August. So then price in August, that's found in B2. Price in price of July, that should be B3, right? This is something, you know, uh, so many people um, cannot associate, you know, the, these things. So yeah, that's PT, then what is PT minus one? B3. B3, yes, yes. And who, who said that? Ying Yu. Okay, Ying Yu. So you got. Yeah. And then we got a close parenthesis because without the parenthesis, then <laughs> what will happen? You know, PAMDAS, you know, right? Parenthesis, exponent, uh, multiplication, diversion, uh, division will. Uh, be execute will be performed before addition and subtraction. So you have to close uh, in parenthesis and then divide it by this. And we got this. So we turn this into percentage and give it always two to three decimal places. Two to three decimal places because uh, without, if you just let it round uh, to an integer, this will round up to three. 3%, but also think about it, something like 3.09. If you have something like 3.09 uh, or uh, 3.49, okay? I hate this font, you know, uh, this is not a good font. Suppose you have 3.09 and let it round, right? Uh, round it. What's it going to become? That's going to round to 3. And let's say you have 2.51. Um, And if you round it, what's it going to round to? Hmm? Also going to round to three. Yeah, three. So you see the uh, the um, the downside, or you know the hidden. You don't 
you don't think about this, you know, you don't, you, because you are, you know, most of you um, probably have never thought about this, never cared about this, but this is, this could be a very um, misleading, this could be a source, you know, of misleading information. Why? If you round it, but if you think about it, uh, they look like the same number, but If you, in, you know, increase the decimal, actually the difference between these two numbers are very significant. The difference is one. You understand? The difference is one. So rounding, you never, you should never let Excel round anything to integer. You have to give it at least two to three decimal places because if you let it round, it just, you know, um, Right, it will be uh, it will be uh, how do you call it? be lying or it will be uh, uh, I mean it, it was totally unintended, but you know it could be misleading the audience. Right, you understand? Okay, so I'm gonna move that around somewhere, so out of our sight. Now once you're done. Uh, the rest of them, you don't have to do it again. You just, you know, copy and drag it down all the way. Uh, but you stop here because you cannot go for below that because uh, July of 2016 doesn't uh, cannot have return because to have the return for that, you have to have June of 2016. And as I, um, I told you, the um, uh, some people panic when they see hashtag oh i must have done something wrong no hashtag means the uh, column is not wide enough it just means column width is not so what do you do is you you can automatically adjust the column width when by placing the cursor on the borderline between uh the this you know column heading and this column heading double click double click it's going to automatically adjust the column width so then, uh, is everyone okay so far? Everyone? Yeah. Has everyone, has everyone got to this point? Mm -hmm. Yes. And how many data points do we have? We have uh, actually 61 data points, right? 61, 61. data points. Uh -huh. 61. And yeah, uh, that's good enough because we we only need 60, but you know, having 61 data points is not a bad thing because um, the 60 data points, we are dealing with monthly data, monthly. So 60 data points mean, you know, uh, means five years, right? <coughs> and so you can, oh, oh, there has been, you see even why very wild monthly fluctuations, right? Uh, sometimes, you know, uh, Apple, just because it is Apple, it doesn't mean it has always good month, right? Good months all the time. Um, <clears throat> uh, if you want to uh, sort it, if you want to sort it, right, uh, in ascending or descending order, I want to, uh, I recommend that you do it uh, not here because it will change because, look, it's formula, right? So if you sorted you know uh in descending order then everything will change it's not gonna uh, current it's not gonna hold because um uh it's not gonna be 10.10 .10 anymore because uh, when when it changes you know all these you know uh, ordering will change so uh what i'm gonna do is i would suggest that you copy this highlight those columns and copy that and take it to another sheet, another worksheet, and paste it there. But this time, use paste special because uh, the formula has been also copied. So when the formula is copied, when you sort it, uh, because of the formula, everything will be all you know uh, scrambled all over again. So you just uh, use paste special and just click values okay then only the values are you can see this right only the uh, 
values are copied, not the uh, pasted, not the uh, not the formula. Then now you can sort this in descending order. Okay, then you can tell. Oh, Apple's best best month was uh, in the last five years, right? In the last five years, Apple's best best month was August of last year. What happened August of last year? I mean, of course, you know, it's the uh, uh, Apple's you know uh, profit was probably you know very good or. Uh, but, you know, uh, there could have been another incident, like Apple came up with iPhone 12 or I, iPhone whatever, or new product or, you know, some, some you know, uh, good news about Apple. But anyway, um, and when was the worst month? Oh, November of 2018 was the worst month for Apple, right? Negative, you know, 18. Uh, and you might think, oh, there must be a symmetry. I don't know if there's a symmetry. I mean, it looks like, uh, and um, the best month still, you know, uh, uh, out to best month out, uh, you know, is better than the worst month by about 2% to 3%, right? And then how many are positive? How many months did we have positive returns? How many months, right? Like, you know, uh, yeah, 39 months. There were 39 positive returns, and that is more than the majority, right? Because out of 60 data points, right, if 39, almost two, thir uh, two thirds, and only, you know, uh, 22 months, it was negative. Uh, so obviously, you know, then if two thirds were, uh, two thirds of the data, gave positive return, positive, and uh, only one third is negative, uh, you know, um, this is obviously a, a winning streak, I would say, winning streak. But, you know, going back to uh, this, okay, so if you want, what is the next thing you want to know? The next thing you want to know is the mean return. Don't you think you want to know the mean return, the average return mean return so uh, how do we how do I find the average return well it's not a difficult thing uh, you can you can just you know uh, find the average you know using the, uh, uh, the average average right and then you uh, highlight everything in the data range okay. and then you have to close the parenthesis, but even if you don't, it will automatically, Excel knows, uh, it will automatically close the parenthesis. Well, it was better than before because every every semester, every year, I track apples, you know, every, you know, like five-year uh, data uh, uh, subset, right? Five-year, you know, every semester I do this. And on average, uh, for the last couple of years, it has been like 2% about two, two point something monthly. Now, um, uh, in the latest five year subset, right, starting from uh, August 2016 through August, you know, uh, 2021, uh, the, the average monthly return was 3.36. That's a significant uh, uh, improvement. Um, so, so I will call it mean or average or mean is the same thing, right? Mean return, so mean R, right? <clears throat> And you might wonder, oh, um, think about it. Uh, you might wonder, uh, this is simple average. Don't we need to take the uh, geometric average? I mean, don't we need geometric average? Uh, uh, yeah, don't you ever wonder why? Because this is, you know, uh, growth over time, 
you are right, but you know, for monthly monthly returns, you know, uh, monthly return doesn't necessarily follow uh, geometric growth. Uh, it's more like a random occurrence, random, random occurrence, because <clears throat> over a very short time frame, like you know, daily. Do you think you know uh, Apple's daily return is uh, yesterday's? I mean, today's Apple's return is the straight forward uh, result of growth from yesterday's return? Huh? In daily returns, that's clearly not because <clears throat> because from quarterly returns, that makes sense. From quarterly returns, it makes sense because, you know, every, qu every quarter, then, you know, after every quarter, then there is, you know, uh, earnings report and uh, the mar uh, investors and the market participants market will see you know um, oh this is you know there was a uh, uh, growth you know due to um, profit you know uh, 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 you know during this you know quarter and then so yeah uh, from you know quarterly data uh, the compounding effect is compounding effect is present right and as the uh, uh, time frame uh, time frame gets uh, bigger in other words you know the units get bigger like you know quarterly annual yeah the compounding uh, effect is obvious but up to monthly um, because you know um, Monthly data is rather, uh, because nobody knows. I mean, uh, with monthly data, there is no earnings reporting, right? The market doesn't know anything about, uh, there is in, internally, uh, Apple internally will always, you know, compile the data, you know, monthly, and they will know whether, you know, um, but from the market's perspective, they don't, have earnings report. In other words, you know, uh, financial statements are not updated, you know, until the end of the quarter. So you wouldn't know, the market wouldn't know um, uh, uh, I mean, uh, monthly, for the monthly, monthly uh, growth, the market wouldn't know. And monthly growth, uh, there is no basis for uh, there is no basis for uh, extrapolating monthly growth or you know uh, and the monthly uh, return is sometimes you know uh, monthly price movement first of all monthly price movement uh, has a lot of you know random factors you know not necessarily a result of growth right although you see the persistent growth. but look after you know uh, August 2020 then it dipped and it dipped back to uh you know so these fluctuations are random i mean if it is the result of persistent you know uh, growth then it wouldn't have it wouldn't be this random but as i said market doesn't know i mean within apple there there could have been a persistent growth month to month right but the market doesn't know that until the data is released and the data is released only quarterly Okay, you understand, and the um, uh, another thing, um, and what was I trying to say? Um, and also, even if uh, in the long run, uh, so monthly, daily, weekly, monthly price movements are basically, you know. Are pretty much, you know, random. I mean, uh, monthly is not uh, that much random, but it's uh, looking at the daily price, you can tell daily price movement, it's quite random. It's like, you know, uh, uh, Brownian motion. You know what Brownian motion is? It's the, uh, the trajectory of gas atoms, uh, gas uh, molecules, gas molecules, right? You never know how, which way, you know, um, and it is also, you know, up to monthly, you know, uh, price movements, uh, 
uh, which is dominated by uh, random factors. So then the return is, you can consider that as, you know, although this is on a time, this is on a timeline, but this timeline is rather than as a uh, longitudinal data, this timeline is almost uh, these, you know, return data and the price data are almost, you know, um, considered as cross-sectional data, like as if it is all possible numbers, all, there are 60 data points existing at a single same time, single point in time, 60 data points that, that can be random, that can come up randomly, right? So this is almost treated, considered like a cross-sectional data, meaning, you know, uh, these are 60 possible numbers that can randomly come up at any point in time, right? So that's why uh, uh, simple average is used, and simple average is okay for this one. But, you know, you, from the quarterly data, it will have to be the geometric average, okay? Because, you know, from the quarterly data, uh, we can find, you know, uh, a clear evidence of growth, right? Uh, you know, uh, uh, but even with the, uh, um, in the long run, I mean, you know, there is, you know, it looks like, you know, uh, there is a lot of randomness here, but in the long run, anyway, we are averaging it, right? So we will, you know, uh, anyway, so if we found uh, the mean, what is the next thing you would like to know? The next thing you would like to know is what would be the uh, average, uh, average, you know, uh, deviation, average deviation from the mean. Okay. And interesting thing is, mean is a, a very neutral number, right? So mean um, is also called expected return. Expected return means mean return or expected return. Expected return means that's the forecast, right? Expected return, meaning uh, that's the forecast. Um, because, you know, that means, you know, this is what's expected. So that means, you know, next month, we can pretty much expect, you know, 3.36. But again, this doesn't mean this is the projection for the next month or forecast for the next month. It's just there's no better guess. There's no better forecast than the uh, uh, than the average from the past data because um, in reality, this is not gonna this may not happen. And think about it. Over the last five years, do you think that ever happened? It doesn't have to happen. There, there was something close. There was something similar, 3.27. But that never happened. This number never happened, right? But that's average. I mean, that's average means, you know, it doesn't have to really be uh, part of the uh, actual data. You understand? Uh, if I take average height of everyone in this classroom, right? That average height may not actually happen or not. And most of the times it may not happen. If average height of everyone, uh, average height of this class is let's say uh, five foot 10 or five foot eight, uh, five foot eight, three, let's say five foot eight, three. Will there be actually someone with that height? Huh? No, by, pure, by pure coincidence. What? I said no, it may not happen because it's just the sum of all of the all of the actual heights and divided by. Yeah, yeah. In other words, it's just. Yeah. It may may happen. Uh, there may be actually someone who is five foot eight three. Maybe it's a by pure coincidence, it's by pure coincidence, really. But you know, most of the times you will never find someone five foot 
you know, uh, A3 in this class, okay? Because it's just, you know, it just came out mathematically, right? It's just the average. But, you know, there is no better, there is no better uh, expected uh, number than this to uh, infer, to infer what it's going to be like in the future, right? So, uh, in September, you know, if I use, you know, another 60 months, right, another 60 months, including September, right, then uh, uh, this average will change slightly. That's called moving average, moving average of 60 months, you know, every, you know, uh, uh, you can get, you know, moving 60 month moving average, August, September, October, and the moving average will uh, change. And um, connecting those moving averages, you know, you can also uh, uh, you can also have a trend line that would uh, give you some uh, uh, you know a peek into how it's going to move in the future. But the point is. Um, the next thing you would want to know is, uh, what is what is the average variation from average variation from this mean? In other words, yeah, it it, it varied. I mean, it it varied between twenty one forty four. I mean, that was the upper bound, and the lower bound was eighteen negative eighteen point four forty four zero. Uh, but what was the average variation, right? So to find the average variation, variation is you know, basically deviation from the mean. So what would you need to do? You will need to first find the difference terms, right? Difference, uh, difference term is basically, I will call it, oops, what is that? I will call it, um, uh, difference term because, you know, um, I will, uh, I will annotate here. Oh, come on. This. All right. I will make a separate, uh, Text. Uh, now I will enter here. Okay, so that's that's what it means, right? Difference, right? That's the difference. Mean, uh, oh, no, no, the other way around. I'm sorry, the other way around. Actual return minus return, right? That's the, you know, that's the difference term. So here, you know, uh, simply what I'm going to do is I will take the difference between, ah, oh, come on. And I'm going to lock this by hitting F4 because you understand why I lock this because I don't want it to change. I'm going to do, I'm going to take the difference for every, every monthly returns, right? So every term. So I don't want it to change because you know, it has to be C64 all the time as I drag it down. Okay. Let's do this. Now I'm going to, it is currently what? is a uh, Georgia Pro 14. So. Okay. 
14. Okay. And then I can drag it down all the way, all the way. Okay. So these are the different terms. So um, our our goal was to um, find the uh, you know average variation. So these are variations. So if I take the average of those, then you know you might think I can get the um, I can get it done. So uh, with that hope, you just you know uh, uh, because this is average command in here. Uh, you drag it and then the formula is copied, but then you get disappointed. Why? Huh? You get disappointed because obviously that's not uh, that's not right. Um, well, then you know uh, this is something that is not unexpected. Why? Because this is, um, think about it. Um, mean, I've been to, I told you, mean is a very neutral number, right? So what does that mean? Uh, that means uh, all these different difference terms have are half of them are positive, half of them are negative, and they and they would be like those uh, negative and positive terms would have the uh, same, uh, you know. Um, uh, variations, same numbers, so they will cancel out each other. If they cancel out each other, <laughs> average will have to be zero. So this doesn't work. Okay, this doesn't work. So what do we do? Uh, so here's the uh, dilemma. But then, um, uh, so some people might say, so can we just, you know, throw away all negative uh, terms and work with positive terms only? No. That means we are throwing away half the data set. If we throw away half the data set, then our data set will lose the dynamics. The uh, uh, It's, it's going to lose the, uh, di the picture of the dynamics that, you know, the data had, data set had. So we cannot throw away, uh, uh, we have to keep 60 data points, 60 data points. So what do we do? Well, one thing we can beat around that, get around it is by uh, squaring using the, you know, uh, difference term squared. Why? Because if you square something, uh, everything squared is always positive, right? No matter whether is the level value is negative or uh, whatever it's going to be always positive then we will have we will uh, still retain 60 data points um and then you might wonder uh, then uh how do we you know find the average variation then uh, i'll i'll get to there i'll talk about it but you know what's important for now is retaining uh the 60 data points not losing any data point okay so we raise that to, you know, uh, power, right? That's how you raise it to, uh, uh, you know, uh, second power, how you square it. There you go. And then um, this gives you some, you know, uh, uh, you know that's, you know, uh, five zeros, right? But then, you know, uh, we turn it into percentage, right? Um, this will have to become a very small number because when you, this is a number that is you know, between one and zero. And if you square a number that is between one and zero, think about it, 0 0.2. If you square it, what does it become? Huh? 0 0.2, if you square it, what does it become? Anyone? Square 0 0.2, what does it become? 0 0.04. 0 0.04, yes. I was... Uh, Thank you. At least, you know, uh, there is someone who is, you know, uh, and who is that, Safia? Yeah. Okay, so I'm going to give you 0 0.25 because I thought, uh, I was expecting, actually, someone might say 0 0.4. <laughs> no. 
it's 0 0.2 times 0 0.2. It cannot be 0 0.4. It's going to be 0 0.04, right? In other words, number numbers between 0 and 1, when you multiply or you know when you raise it to power, it gets smaller. It gets smaller, right? It only gets smaller. So uh, uh, this is actually a very small number. And if I, uh, so uh, let's change that to a number of even zero, zero, and um, give it percentage, right? And give it like, uh, I've been telling you, you know, you give it enough. You see, this is what it is like. Very small number, right? So maybe just, you know, uh, you know, that's five decimal, five decimals. And then you drag it down, drag it down. OK. Then we have what? We have, you know, uh, all positive numbers, right? So what we can do is now we'll take the average, right? But first, to take average, we got to. Um, sum, first thing we need to do is sum everything, right? So I'm going to, um, using auto sum, right? It's going to sum everything, OK? And uh, because this is a sum and um, And this is a sum of what? Sum of all the uh, squared terms, right? Squared numbers. So it's got a name. The name is, name is SSQ. And what do you think? What do you think that stands for? What do you think it is? Hmm? What do you think SS, SSQ is? No, no. no. Okay. Sum of standard Some deviation. Of I mean, you know, this, is this Some is this standard deviation? Huh? Where no. what? Where's the where does the Q come from then? Hmm? What is the name? What do you think the name should be? Huh? I've been telling you this is we summed, right? We summed what? We summed what? What's that? Square data. Yes, we summed the squared, squared numbers. So squared terms. So it stands for sum of squares. Sum of squares, right? Now then, um, so we need to uh, divide it to take average. We need to divide it by the number of data points, right? So uh, I'm going to divide now this by, and what is the, uh, we have 61 data point. I mean, you can you can check. Uh, we have 61, you know, I mean, although I wanted 60, but, you know, it doesn't. But, you know, uh, without counting, without visually counting, you can have Excel counted using count command, okay? Uh, I remember, you know, in Sesame Street, in the old days, there was, you know, count, uh, <laughs> count Dracula. <laughs> uh, he, uh, you don't want to become a count Dracula because, you know, but Excel will do it, you know, you just highlight this. Oh, it's 61, good. I mean, uh, it will give you 61. But do we divide it by 61? No. You have to subtract one from it. Why? Um, because this is a sample data. Sample data meaning, you know, uh, it's a subset of Apple's population. So, uh, but you have to uh, enclose it in the parenthesis. Uh, otherwise, you know, it will just divide it by uh, by this, and then from that you will subtract one. So if I do that, uh, it's going to be like this. That's too much. I'm going to uh, about you know uh, just about 
three to four is good enough. This two, I'm gonna. Three to four decimal places, that's enough. So if this is uh, called SSQ, sum of squares, and this is the average, sort of average of sum of squares, but uh, what's it called? It's called variance. Okay, it's called, you know, keyboard. called variance, okay, variance. Now, variance is sort of like an average of all these sum of squares, right? But then, y subtract one, uh, it's called, you know, loss of one degree of freedom, loss of one degree of freedom. And this is a statistical uh, concept, uh, why? Um, it's a long, it's got a long, you know, uh, story, but, you know, uh, everything was, you know, explained in my lecture and we don't have too much time. So I'm just going to uh, uh, tell you that Apple, uh, the data, Apple's data, actually Apple started, remember Apple went, I told you about this, Apple went public in 1981. So Apple is a 40 year old company, right? 40 year old company. So Apple's price data for the last all, you know, 40 years, I mean, if we calculate a uh, return from the last 40 years, then that's called, you know, uh, population data, population. Population doesn't mean human population only. The entire data set is po called population. And then, but we used only the most recent five years. It's a subset, right? The subset of the entire population is called sample, okay? And depending on, I mean, I can, I can, you know, uh, get five years. I can collect, you know, a subset, five-year subset for, you know, over. Uh, if if I'm if those five-year subsets are not overlapping, overlapping, right? then at least I can get five, uh, eight sample data, eight subset, uh, subset, right? And if I allow overlapping, there can be numerous, right? Numerous, you know, uh, sample data. But, you know, uh, the point is anyway, we have only, we are using sample and the sample is not, the mean of the sample is not the true mean, mean of the population. Obviously, think about it. Cannot be the mean, the uh, first five years of Apple's, you know, life, you know, history, um, like 81 through 86, the, that sample, right, data, the mean of that sample data cannot be the same thing as the most recent, but, you know, there will be some, um, it may not be that, it, it, it can be drastically different or it may not be, but the, uh, uh, the idea is the, uh, mean of every sample group is not the same thing as the mean of the uh, population. The mean of the population is called the true mean because that's the, uh, but anyway, uh, the thing is because uh, mm -hmm. of that, may, we are making adjustment, right? Uh, because of, you know, loss of one degree of freedom, we are making, uh, we are making adjustment by, by subtracting one from it, right? And then, uh, if it is, you know, uh, population data, we don't have to do this. You know, it's just the uh, entire 40 years, then how many data points? You know, uh, four, uh, 40 times, you know, 12, 480 data points. If we have 480 data points, you know, then that's the population. We don't have to make this adjustment for sample. Now, so this is like an average variation, but then in uh, uh, returns, but then this is not the... Uh, a life size picture. This is really not the life size picture. Why? Think about it. This is not the life size picture. Why? Think about it. Because this is squared up, a uh, squared. Uh, this is the squared data, right? Mean of the squared data. So then it's like a blown up picture, right? Magnified picture. 
actually it's not magnified because this uh, number, you know, small uh, number between zero and one gets smaller, right? Um, so we need to uh, revert it back to, uh, take it back to life size picture. And we know already how to, why? Because this was, you know, uh, uh, squared. So how do you re revert it back to a life size picture? If the, you know, square from squared picture, blown up picture, and we blew it up by squaring, then how do you revert it back to life size picture? Take the square root. Huh? Yeah, take the square root. So if I take the square root, uh, let me just, you know, copy it down. Not, it's not uh, what I'm uh, gonna do, but you know, uh, because just to retain the uh, font and um, so square root is you can do SQRT or raise it to one half, right? So I'm gonna point to this, and you know, uh, if you raise it to half, right? If you raise it to half, that's square root. Okay, so that's the uh, that's the life size picture of the uh, variation. That's the uh, average, you know, deviation from the mean, right? Uh, 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 over the last, you know, uh, uh, five years. Okay. And another thing, if you wonder, look, um, yeah, I, I'm not gonna do. Uh, but, you know, uh, use this and uh, 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 starting from August price, right? Let's do this if you want to. Uh, this It's just a rough estimation, right? Uh, this is to 60. I'm not starting from, uh, 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 yeah, 61 because from there. Yeah. Try that and see if it's gonna be similar to if it's gonna look similar to uh, August price. August. May or may not. Uh, 186. Okay, so it was, and you understand why? Because this is simple average. Simple average will overstate, right? Overstate. Simple average will overstate. If this is a geometric average, it will be it will get you close. That number, maybe it was you know raising to sixty, but you know uh, so then uh, we understand what is the uh, mean and the standard deviation and how do we use that? Um, how do we use that? Uh, we are out of time, so we're gonna be talking about that tomorrow, and there's a lot to talk about uh, tomorrow because it's the last day. All right, so. Everyone could follow all the way up to this. I want you to save this file because, you know, this is going to be um, something that uh, will uh, jostle your memory later, you know, about what we did uh, in this class. All right. So um, let me stop recording. Uh, let me say um, goodbye and uh, uh, but before I go, is there any question so far? Is there any question? All right. So final, I, I checked. There are three, three, uh, 33 problems, 33 problems. And someone said yesterday that in the quiz that there were 50 problems. No, I checked. It. There were only 25 problems. I don't know why that person said, you know, uh, huh? No, the second, the second quiz that you write us. Not the, not the last one. Who had 25 problems? Okay. Yes, that was 25. Maybe quiz one had 50. I don't know. I don't think quiz one had 50. Anyway, so. Um, the, uh, optional was, hmm? the optional quiz. Oh, you mean, you know, uh, the practice. Yeah. Uh, ROI practice test. Yeah, yeah. ROI pra that's practice. You know, it doesn't even. Um, all right. So uh, uh, if you have no further questions, I will sign off. Uh, I will uh, stop recording and uh, sign off. All right. Take care, everyone. Take care. Thank you. All right. Thank you. All right. You're welcome. You too. Thank you.